All right, welcome back for the fourth match of this Pauper League. Uh, we lost the Dyrol here versus Tuturo Isle. Isles? No, just Isle. Um, we'll keep this hand on the Mulligan to six. Opponent keeping seven. I think there's potential to just keep Ancestral Mask here. Maybe bottom Rancor. We probably don't need Ethereal Armor with how big Ancestral Mars is going to make our creature. Um, so turn one, Scout, turn two. Oh god, it's Demir Control. Oh, I hope these Utopias resolve. Hey, look, an Ethereal Armor. All right, so it's a decent place to start. Let's play that, pass the turn. That's not looking so good. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll see if our opponent's got that counter spell up. Okay, apparently not. Uh, yeah, I'll attack for one and pass the turn. I don't think this is fairies. Uh, we could be attacking into a spell starter sprite there, but I think Demir fairies has fallen off the edge of the cliff a little bit. Mental note from the opponent. So this is likely the Demir control that runs Talarian, Big Fatty, um, yeah, this guy, and Gurmorg Angler. They can also give a 1-1 lifelink counter. There's Talarian Terror. All right, so we'll kick the turn off with Abundant Growth on our land. Try to get to our white mana, which is going to be pretty important. We do indeed find our white mana now. So let's go ahead and Rancor over here. It's possible that our opponent's holding up Spell Pierced right now. In which case, do I want to Ethereal Armor into Spell Pierce? Let's make them have it. Let's see what they've got. If they use it on that, they're not using it on Ancestral Mask. Um, Sentinel's Eyes, obviously, we could replay that later if the game goes long enough from the graveyard for its escape cost. As it is, that resolved. We get to attack for seven. Very high upside. Opponent with the Mental Note now. Um, Additionally, our opponent could have like Chainer's Edict next turn, and we're going to be reset, lose our Ethereal Armor, get our Rancor back, but at least our land is developed for now. Chainer's Edict, yeah. Classic. Six in hand. Plays an Ice Tunnel in tapped as well. And we break, yeah, let's go. Go team. Ah. <laughs> Uh, you can go on white and pass turn. All right, so opponents played a fatty fatty Gurmog, uh, holding up counterspell mana. We cannot cartouche our opponent's Gurmog getting a token because this can only enchant creatures we control. Great into spell skirt, not so great here. All right, fatty fatty Gurmog is attacking. We're down to 15. I guess our opponent's just going to want to hold up counter magic for the entire remainder of the match. Nope, there's... Uh, Gurmog Angler, and let's skip to our second main, see if we can get this one through. Any sort of counter spell on a Lazy S6. Looks like our opponent has the option to counter this, and they're holding exactly counter spells, so that's likely us doomed here. Here we are, attacks for 10, putting us to 5. Yes, that's a card. Let's go ahead and Abundant Growth here, drawing a card. And Lotus Petal is a swift concession. All right, so here we can see a Demir Talarian control deck. Um, there's its creatures. We've already seen those. Interaction of Counterspell, Pel Spell Pierce, uh, Suffocating Fumes, Unexpected Fangs to gain some life on their end. Um, Chain is Edict, four of which are in the sideboard board of this deck. I wish her opponent was doing the same thing. More Suffocating Fumes, chances for like Shrivel and things like that as well. Chances for Duress too. Reminder guys, if you do enjoy this video or find it informative, please consider subscribing. Um, so this is a sort of matchup where Relic of Progenitus is very good. There's potential for like one to two crew fixes insights as well, depending on what we're taking out. I don't mind taking out one mask for crew fixes insight. A life gain probably isn't super valuable that we need all four armadillo cloak. Um, additionally, we can probably trim on some mana sources here. Let's go ahead and submit that, get into the match. 
All right, good old no creature hand to kick things off. So down on resources. Point of miles to six as well, at least. Uh, we'll keep this one. It's not very good into China's Edict, though, which is unfortunate, but I think we have to keep the hand. Ditch that. Done. All right, so turn one, scout from us. Keep things simple. Pass the turn. Planet plays Contaminated Aquifer, and well, we hit another creature, so we can avoid the complete blowout. Um, yeah, it's like super bad into Shrivel, though. Uh, I think we're... Just wanting to cycle Ash Barons here. That makes poor use of Utopia Sprawl, though. Um, yeah, I really don't like how a hand is constructed here. It's not very handy. So choice is go for Forest, Utopia Sprawl on white, or we can go for Planes, cast Ethereal Armor Attack. I think because our mana is just in such an awkward spot here, we just want to develop our mana. Go ahead and attack for one. All right, so opponent finds their island and passes to us. <clears throat> so test some training here and see what our opponent does in response. Utilizing this mana stops me from playing like a bogle that I draw off with the one mana there. That gets countered. All right, so we'll Ethereal Armor now, we'll attack. We got Chain as Edict, we can at least resolve Silhana Ledgewalker next turn. Uh, and then it's just a battle of attrition from that point, currently of which we are losing. Thought Scour, Gurmog and Brainstorm into the bin off that one. Untaps, onto us. All right, so let's Silhana so Ledgewalker, see if there's a response from our opponent. Of course. All right, Ethereal Armor, and we are very, very weak into Chainer's Edict now at this point, but at least we attack for seven. We're putting a clock on our opponent. Thoughts Gower from our opponent, Chainer's Edict, Suffocating Fumes to the Graveyard, playing a mental note now. Counterspell, Deep Analysis to the Graveyard. Talarian Terror from our opponent. Uh, source of Trample would be nice. All right, let's get in for an attack here. And then I guess it's just second main Glade Cover Scout. If we put our opponent to two here, that's almost good enough. Um, looks like they elect to block. We get our protection, pass the turn. Opponent flashes back deep analysis, drawing a card. Solarian Terror, sure. Opponent is forced to block the Big Scout, um, given they paid three life for flashing back the deep analysis. So we'll go ahead and attack here. Um, okay. We have first strike. If you're giving this uh hexproof lifelink, that's not gonna work. Yeah, so we'll deal first strike damage before they get the lifelink damage from there. Um alright, so a bit of a misplay from our opponent there. Um but we'll take it. Alright, so on to sideboarding now. Um is there anything we want to change here? I think the ancestral masks just seem a little bit too clunky. Uh, let's bring in one more crew fixes insight because they do have a lot of counter magic here. Uh, after that, uh, why am I not bringing in my young wolves? They're literally in here for this matchup. Bring in our young wolves like we should have earlier. Oh goodness, goodness, goodness! What a fool I am. I've been playing several leagues without that card in the deck, so um, I I just forgot about its existence there. Sorry. 
All right, so here we see a hand that's just on the side of Keepable. Opponent mulligans to six. Only one creature, unfortunately, but these Sentinel's Eyes are good into counter magic because we can replay them later on. There's our redundant creature. Beautiful. All right, so our opponent is holding up counter magic now. Uh, let's go ahead and Sentinel's Eyes, see what they do. Counter spell being held up. At the minute. I'm not going to run this Glade Cover Scout into a counter spell. I think that's a little short sighted. So I'm just going to pass the turn and use Ash Barons in my opponent's end step. Opponent with Ice Tunnel in tapped. We'll cycle this one. Get our other planes. And good stuff there. Another Ash Baron's off the top. Not really what we're wanting to see. Looks like our opponent is just letting us go a little bit ham here, though. What do you say about Ethereal Armor opponent? That one resolves as well. All right, well, we're going to get to attack for six here. Uh, I still don't want to play this Glade Cover Scout into Counter Magic, so I'm going to pass the turn, force my opponent to have the Chainer's Edict. Um, and at this point, they could have Chainer's Edict plus Counterspell. We're only really losing Ethereal Armor here. Uh, these Ash Barons are putting cards in Graveyard for our Sentinel's Eyes. Now we kind of want to see a creature off the top because this thing is going to get like snap counted by our opponent. Not a creature. All right, well, what do you got, opponent? Yep, opponent plays patiently and has it all. Unfortunate for us. It's a really big shame. If one of these Sentinel's Eyes or Ethereal Armor was Cartouche of Solidarity instead, it would have forced our opponent's hand a lot more. Um, as it is, they're not actually adding anything to the battlefield at the moment. They can only have three more counter spells in the deck as well. Griffix's Insight is a sorcery, but I might use this to try and bait a counter for a Hexproof creature. So, for example, in this spot here, uh, we'll Griffix's Insight. All right, looks like we're allowed to do that and find Satess and Train Rancor. Fortunately, putting Relic and Silhana Ledgewalker back. Um, I think there's a high likelihood our opponent has Counterspell here. I think I'm going to try and play around its second main, even though they didn't fall for that in the earlier match. Hey, our Vogel actually resolves this time. Let's go for our Sentinel's Eyes there. Exile, Exile. Maybe they didn't see that Relic of Progenitus. Um, they're at the point where they can flashback Chainer's Edict though. Suffocating Fumes. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's better than just going for Chainer's Edict, honestly. All right, opponent plays a Talarian Terror, holding up two mana now. Lotus Petal off the top. Uh, yeah, not getting much help from our deck here, unfortunately. All right, Archaeologist now. Brainstorm. Uh, plays Contaminated Aquifer in tap, attacks for five. Two cards in our opponent's hand. All right, well, they can only have Three counter spells left still. <laughs> this Gurmog second main. It certainly is. Bun and growth. All right, so we need to draw like hexproof creature, and then off the Satessan training, draw protection against Diabolic Edict. We see neither. Um, again, Satessan training can't enchant our opponent's creatures. It only enchants creatures we control. So we can't go for that line. We're currently on 15, getting smacked for 10 here. Opponent plays Deep Analysis, drawing two cards. Yeah, this one's probably all over Red Rover, I would presume. Deep analysis again. Wow. Well, let's have a little fun here. Hello, opponent. I should really... No, no, I'm doing this wrong. Should enchant this one, right? Yeah. Well, not surprisingly, yeah, this, this game is well and truly over. Um, we'll just have, like, 
a little bit of fun here and uh, <laughs> let's do what we can. All right, so with all of that, we give our opponent a 12 power archaeologist and uh, maybe they just attack with this one and not the others. Um, no, they're just attacking with everything. Yeah, well, um, boo. <laughs> anyway, this one did kill us because of the first strike. Don't forget that. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, fortunately, we didn't quite get there in the end. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Should I be going back up to four cartouche and more copies of Young Wolf in the fact that this is one of the more popular decks in the metagame currently? Till next time, have a wonderful day, I'll see you then.